Hi, this is a, a, a video about property. So we're going to start with a, a, a very simple prompt, a bridge. The 1.4 is just to give the bridge weight, so the bridge is front and centre. And I chose a bridge because it has a, a built-in context. A bridge goes over something, it's an object in a landscape. So when we generate, we get a bridge in a landscape, which uh, I have to say is not very exciting, but you can't argue with them. It's a bridge. So what I wanted to find out was what all the words that people put into prompts, some, some prompts are rather extravagant. Oh, there's that word extravagant there. So we'll start with extravagant. So I've selected a, a group of words here that are all to do with complication and frilly stuff, details, <laughs> whatever you just loads of stuff. So what I did is I, I put each of these into my prompt. So here's what Rococo does for us. Very nice too. I wish my garden looked like that. Baroque. And there we are. We've got buildings and statues. I think that's trying to be a horse statue there. It's, uh, sort of doing an epic fail if it is. So what if we put them all in? Well, there's the result. Pretty, uh, pretty, um, pretty over the top. Do you want a closer look? Yes, that's um, that's quite a bridge, isn't it? Yes, and there's like Florence in the distance, and Canaletto's been at the boats and the water. We'll try it with another object. We'll try it with a spaceship. So here's a spaceship with none of that stuff in, and if we put it in, we get well. I suppose it could be a spaceship. It's hard to say, isn't it? It's certainly Brock <laughs> and uh, and something else. So. You can set, you can make up other sets of words as well um, that cover different areas, not just the fancy stuff with lots of bits and bobs in the image. So this is done with another set of words, which is I put up as mix B there, alluring, appealing, charming, and it hasn't really changed the spaceship much. None of those words <laughs> are terribly valid. An alluring spaceship, stunning. A stunning is okay, I suppose. A bewitching spaceship. I don't know. Anyway, so we'll try another set of words. Ah, this now this does a little bit more. So you can tell if your words are relevant to your subject, i.e. the spaceship, by how much it changes it from just putting spaceship in. So it tells you how much the prompt words are having an effect. So this is it, sort of slightly more threatening and friendly. It hasn't done the deformed, has it? No, I don't think so. It's not, it's not symmetrical, really. But uh, we'll, well, so we'll try another set of words. Mix D. This is beautiful, sensational. And this is a, this is not dissimilar, is it, from B. So it's not having much of an effect. And E was the same. It didn't really have any effect on the spaceship as well, because it's dazzling and brilliant. There's not many spaceshipy words there. I think the lights increased a bit, that's all. Here's another mix of words. This is all about uh, sort of simplicity and uh, calmness and so on. And we've got a, a, a rather sad little spaceship on, a, on, a, on an endless desert there. Doesn't really go with spaceships, but it does have a big effect. Right, and now this has an effect. This is putting landscape in. We've got trees, forests. Shangri-La. There's a little person appeared there and it's all pretty lush but the thing to note is that those words have had a big effect on the spaceship prompt. And here we go again. This again has had a big effect. Um, it's taken our spaceship and made a wreck of it. Finally we have another one which is about refined, tasteful, composed, elegant, neat and again, that has had a big effect. It tells you which words or which groups of words have a big effect. And it depends on the subject they're having an effect on. The dazzling, brilliant, soft, hazy or mix E isn't really relevant to spaceships. It doesn't have a, much of a, an effect on spaceships. But it would have an effect, quite an effect, on a person. And we'll look at that in a second. So the next uh, thing is to try our mixes out. We're going to use monsters because a, a character is the uh, is the most sensitive to um, any um, of these moderating words, modulation words. So um, we're going to use a monster, and I'm afraid he's turquoise because of the film. And there's no getting away from it. Monsters are now turquoise and very often furry. So here, here's our monster with um, with just monster and nothing else in the prompt. And then we'll do it with the uh, mix A. And as you can see, he becomes a little bit more fierce and monstrous. Mind you, the, um, the shock troops down there don't seem to be particularly concerned, which is a bit strange. And we've got... We've got 
We've got Baroque architecture, it's quite flamboyant and elaborate and detailed. Some of the words don't get used, and if you want to use these words in an actual image you're generating, I tend to add them one by one so I can gauge the effect. But here we're just slapping them all in because we want to see um, how the poor old monster gets <laughs> gets uh, tormented by the words. He's not very tormented in here. He looks quite perky here. And here we have, he's alluring. Well, he, I think, it, well, yes, he does it for me. So this is mix B, uh, appealing, delicate, elegant. Obviously not a very suitable prompt for a monster. Uh, he's quietened down a bit. He's not quite so cross, but, uh, but it's not a very monstery mix, that one. Mix C is much more monstery, but he's, um, yeah, he's not well, is he? I think uh, his diet could be improved there. So anyway, that's Mix C. Mix D, he's back on form again. He's beautiful, sensation, marvellous, overwhelming, glorious, opulent and sublime. So we have a bit of a background in this one because of the... Um, because of the, uh, probably because of the grand and sublime. So next we go on, dazzling and brilliant, Mixie. And there he is. He's, um, yes, he's got very furry. <laughs> and he's, he's not quite as, poor chap's not quite as fierce as he was, is he? You might pat him on the head and give him a stroke, won't you? Anyway, Mix F is uh, even, even, uh, it's, it's even more of a downgrade for a monster, I'm afraid. Oh, oh, poor monster. That is cruel, isn't it? Yes, yes. More of a sock puppet than a monster, really. So anyway, he's off, off to the country next. So we're Mix G, which is verdant and forested. And there he is. He looks a lot happier, though he seems to have got a little bit mossy. But uh, other than that, he's, 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 um, he's, he's quite happy, isn't he, there? He's quite happy, yeah. So anyway, next one. Crooked, rough, textured, contorted, knotted, writhing, tortuous. Well, yes, he's, uh, he's not so good there, is he? He's ancient. He's, he's got a few years on him, near to retirement. Uh, I don't know if monsters go to retirement homes. Maybe not. And the next one is refined and tasteful. Yes. And another prompt that doesn't quite go with the monster. And he, he doesn't look very taken with that one, does he, really? It's a bit of a shock for the poor creature. And here we are. He's ruined and decrepit and run down. So we've got a lots of wrecked and derelict here. So we've, we've got references to a background. So it's put background in a derelict houses and stuff. The next one is a bit more monstery. There, look at that. He's got... He's pretty spiky. He's spiky and toothy and... and uh, and yes, you, you, you definitely wouldn't pat him, would you? So the next one is mostly to do with colour. Fix M is colourful, saturated, rich, primary, intense. So I think he's going to have a makeover. Oh my God, he has had a makeover. Look at that. He's, um, <clears throat> yes, he's, he, he's had every colour of paint thrown over him there. A bit of embarrassment for, for the poor creature. Next one. Uh, this is verging on a style thing, which I'll I'll do in another video. But um, just to show, by having lots of references to drawing styles, uh, you can force it to uh, to do a drawing. And uh, this particular model is not keen on doing drawings. It wants to do photographs, really, or um, 3D renders, or you know, very finished works. It doesn't want to do drawings. So this is this is works pretty well to for force him force him into a drawn state. So next one, he's, he's happy? Yes. Not a very monstery, <laughs> not a very monstery prompt, I'm afraid. And yes, he's, he's friendly and yes, yes, it would be, he would be an embarrassment to all the other monster, monsters, wouldn't he? Oh no, it's, he's, I think that's almost worse. He's now a pathetic monster. He's miserable and unhappy, depressed and disconsolate, moping and bored, woebegone, sad, sombre, wretched and sullen. All at the same time. Okay, so the final one uh, in in these ones is um, angry, furious, mad, and fum. This is more monstery, isn't it? I think you'll prefer this. Uh, yes, and he he is pretty cross there, isn't he? Yeah. Although the the, the monster as a subject it has a tendency to this anyway. So uh, I can't quite I can't resist having uh, showing putting more than one in. So this is putting two in. This is putting in as far as I remember the uh, the A which is the baroque and uh, uh, the other one which is uh, crafted and skillful masterpiece which are in the 
previous frame, but, but you get the idea. And you, once you have these mixes, of course, you can mix the words. And as I said already, put the words in one by one. Don't throw the whole lot in like I am, because um, really, if you put them in one by one, you can gauge what effect they're having. So if you put a word in, it makes no difference whatsoever. There's no point in having the word there, because spaces in your prompt are quite valuable. So here we go. This is, I can't remember this is, no, this is three, three of them, which is, uh, I think this is the number A and uh, the verdant and the verdant foresty one with a fierce in there as well. It gets a little less coherent the more you put in, you put too much stuff in. It'll sometimes you'll be lucky, but uh, you'll get more, um, you get more um, just um, random ones. And the way to check how random you're getting is to do four um, with a random seed in and uh, if they're very very varied then uh, it's making most of it up and it's a bit the AI is, is is not exactly sure what you want okay so do we want to see four oh, I suppose we do there we are four look at that and there's the locals I think I think they're in for a bad time there I, I, I can't remember which four I put in there but the, the verdant one is in there for sure and uh, there he is the many clawed many fingered monster so that's about it for that stage. Um, I will do one more section on prompts to position the camera, uh, which is a, a, a difficult. So we'll do that in the next section. It's a slightly different subject, but there's um, getting your viewpoint at a different distance. Um, so here we have um, a few words you might use. Close up, portrait, macro, near and proximal. As you see, they, they bring the monster pretty close. You, you can put in uh, different lenses and so on, it does seem to understand those. Um, I, ha I don't use them much myself. One thing you can't do is turn your viewpoint, move it left or right. You can tilt up and down, but um, you can't look to the left or look to the right. It doesn't understand um, relatives, so it doesn't... left of wit, what? Who's left? My left or the picture's left or or whatever so it, it it doesn't understand relative positions at all okay so this is let's cut him down to size isn't it so um so there he is uh distant i mean you can try using things like a dot on the horizon and far distant and uh, i i think you probably if you've got this far through the video you, you're uh you you understand what's going on a little bit so that's pushed him quite a way back you would have to um add more to uh, push him further away. And there's a wide angle, it's panoramic. The, the, the town has appeared because of the word panorama. A panorama has to be a panorama of something, and uh, it's chosen a town, but it could have chosen absolutely anything. And the next one, and this is quite difficult to do sometimes, uh, you know, to get the whole figure in. It quite often very much wants to um, uh, crop in quite closely uh, and the more you describe your subject the more it will come in close so if you describe your su subject's face for example a great deal then the viewpoint will come closer to uh, bring the face closer so you, I sometimes push things away by giving them belts and mentioning what shoes they're wearing even will even do that you know uh, walking and, and things like that will bring the feet into view and the final one and I couldn't resist throwing in a again it's a low viewpoint, uh, just a low viewpoint, the horizon is, but um, I see it, it's really gone to town on the Baroque here, and our, our monster is overwhelmed by the architecture, and, uh, and there you go, all a bit much. Uh, the, uh, there's two other things which are very simple. This is looking straight up, looking up works fine usually, uh, nothing is guaranteed, and high viewpoint works pretty well for the most part. I've moved on from monsters here. So there you go, I'll just quickly run through um, how I've been making these so you can set up your own system or UI so 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 that you can uh, experiment yourself and have fun. Okay, so uh, for those, uh, for the nerds, here's uh, how I have um, my setup for doing this experiment. You can see I'm using one of the new Turbo SDXLs and that allows me to, to um, generate very quickly, which is what I've got to do um, quite a lot, which is quite nice. So you can see my setup here. Those who are familiar with Comfy UI will soon disentangle this because it's very, very simple. I'm, uh, for the most part, using a, a, a fixed seed and, and that's about it. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, thank you very much for watching.